it doesn't take a teacher long to figure out that there's a lot of apps and extensions in the Chrome Web Store that you probably don't want your students accessing. The good news is that managing apps and extensions for your school or your school district is very easy to do through the Google Admin Console. This video is going to give you a quick overview about how to set up app management and give you some things to think about as you determine what your school's policy will be. Now there are three different ways that you can manage content for Chromebooks. You can whitelist content, which means that students can only install apps and extensions that have been approved by the district. You can blacklist content, which means they can install anything unless it has specifically been blocked. Or you can push only, which means students cannot install anything. The district will push out those apps and extensions directly to the student uh, if they desire. Now, I took a poll of um, more than 60 different school districts from around the world, and the results are uh, what you see on your screen. Uh, this is published in my book, The Chromebook Classroom. Um, it was split fairly evenly. 50% um, or 49% are pushing the content, 20% uh, blacklisting and 31% whitelisting. What this poll um, illustrates is that all three of these policies can be successful. Uh, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. It all depends on your district, your IT department, how much time IT has to manage and address these issues. Let me walk you through the steps of how to configure your Chromebooks to adhere to one of these three policies. I'm going to switch over to the Google Admin Console. Now, it's important to note that unless you have access to the Google Admin Console, you will not be able to make these changes. Um, I am currently looking at the Chrome user settings. Uh, so to get to this page, you're going to click on device management. And then on the left side, you will click on Chrome management and then you will select user settings. Now you can only get to this page if you are actively managing Chromebooks. So if you have not purchased the management license for your Chromebook, then you wouldn't be able to access this portion of the admin console. I've scrolled down a little bit on the Chrome user settings page uh, so I got to the apps and extensions section. I'll walk you through from this point. So the very first thing that you're going to see is just at the most basic level, do I want my students to install extensions, themes, apps, etc.? Um, the only reason you would uncheck any of these boxes is if you were just like, we're not going to use extensions at all in any form, period. Generally speaking, you're going to leave all of those checked. We're going to deal with this in a little more sophisticated way uh, down below. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And the first thing that you want to do is right here where it says allow or block apps and extensions. And so on this um, drop down, you are going to pick one of these two choices, either allow all apps except the ones you block. So that's blacklisting or, or uh, excuse me, allow apps except the ones you block. Um, that is the uh, blacklisting and then block all apps except the ones you allow that is whitelisting. My personal recommendation would be to block all apps except the ones that you allow. This is a more proactive approach so that you're going to go ahead and curate a list of apps and extensions that students can select from. Now once you have made that selection you will go down to the next section and select the apps and extensions that you are going to allow students to um, install from. Now the good news is that I can give you a list of a hundred or so Chrome apps that will satisfy 90% of students and teachers. I mean, there's always, uh, you know, an, another one here or there, but the majority of students and teachers use the same general set of tools. Now, if you do decide to do the um, whitelist as um, I would recommend. 
um, you are going to need a policy or a way for a teacher to request a new app to be added to the whitelist. Maybe that's a support ticket or a Google form or something of that nature. Now, if you decide to go the blacklist route, when you click, you know, allow, except the ones I block, um, down below this will change and that will say which ones am I blocking. So it just depends on what uh, selection you have um, up here. Now, in addition to blocking or approving specific apps, you may wish, and this is a helpful new feature, you may wish to block certain apps by category. So for example, um, there's a couple that generally don't, we don't want in school. So like proxy filters, maybe a VPN, um, games. So you're just like, you know what, we're not going to deal with this content at all. Do not allow students to um, install any any tools that fit um, these categories. So that's uh, you know a little bit easier way to um, deal with that. Now the last thing we'll look at are the force installed apps and extensions, and um, we're going to scroll up a little bit, and this is where you're going to see the force installed. Um, you know, it's it's a good idea to consider force installing, you know, the tools that you as a school or as a district are really emphasizing. So if Google Classroom is really a big component of, you know, your instructional model, then, you know, pushing that um, app out might be a good idea. Where I would be cautious about pushing out apps and extensions is, you know, pushing out every app that every teacher wants to every student, it quickly gets out of hand. Like if you have five different math teachers and each one of them has their favorite, you know, graphing calculator app and you push it out, well, now every kid has five different options for that one um, specific task. What I would rather do is whitelist those different calculator apps and then each individual teacher would just tell their class, hey, I recommend this particular calculator app, go to the web store and install it. And that way only the kids who are using it have it installed on their device. Force installing is a little more popular at the elementary grades. Um, I like whitelisting and allowing students to have some control at the middle and high school levels. Um, that's how it works. One final thing that I will mention, if you have not had a policy up to this point and you are watching this video because some kid installed something that was bad and now you're trying to figure out how to uh, get rid of it, um, what you need to do is just come in here and change your policy probably to uh, block all apps except the ones you allow. And what that will do is it will remove all apps from all student devices except for the ones that have been approved. So any student who has an inappropriate or blocked app currently on their Chromebook, it will be removed from that device. So it's very nice. It is retroactive um, if necessary. Good luck as you manage your Chrome apps and extensions. Um, if you're interested in more tips on managing Chromebooks, you can head over to my website, chrmbook.com, and there's lots of content there for you to look at.